Kia ora. this is Made in New Zealand where we talk to Kiwi musicians, artists and writers and it is our huge pleasure to have in the studio this morning Adele Broadbent, author of six novels now. Six, yes, yeah. that's right. Yeah. So your new novel, if only, for young adults. Mm -hmm. Tell us about the plot, first of all. Um, if only is really about a couple of girls who um, want to become part of the in crowd, so to speak. You know, they've always just sort of floated on the periphery of, of um, all the school groups and things like that. And um, one of them, Kayla, she's quite happy with that. She's quite happy with her merry band of two. Mm. But her friend Tamsin, or Tam for short, she's, you know, she wants to crack those battlements and get in there and, you know, get in into all the, all the good stuff. And so mm. off they go to a party that uh, Kayla didn't know much about. Tam was hoping that she'd be invited after this uh, show that they go to, which they shouldn't be at either, and things pretty much turned to custard quite quickly. Because how old are the girls? They're 15, but just yeah. sort of just 15, and yep. yeah, um, naive 15-year-olds. Underage for everything. Underage for everything, <laughs> exactly, exactly. And they jump in in the deep end, and things really don't go to plan. Mm. So that's the first sort of moral dilemma, yes. and I really love the moral dilemmas, the ethics of, of this book, because they're not supposed to be at the party, and like you say, Kayla is very uncomfortable with that, mm. and then there's drinking and all that kind of thing. Yes, yes. And then the big moral dilemma. Yes. Tell us a little about that. I know no spoilers, because yeah. people are going to want to read the book, but... Ex exactly. The, the big moral dilemma that really is this guilty secret that wraps the whole plot together, really, and drives the whole plot, is um, Kayla promised to do something. She, pr she promised her mum that she would uh, visit a family friend and something terrible happens, it all horribly goes wrong and Kayla blames herself. Mm. And she's too scared to tell anyone. Um, it gets to the point, you know, she swings in the middle of the night between telling everything to running away to not saying anything and she just swings back and forth, back and forth and she's put herself on this guilt hook and that's what drives it, the, the whole plot, really. Mm, yeah. yeah, and and just trying to deal with that herself. So she's supposed to go and see... See. Auntie. Yes, her auntie, yeah. And doesn't go. And doesn't go. And then something terrible happens. Happens, yes. And she might have been the last person that could have intervened. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> yeah, that's a pretty big one. <laughs> yeah, it was. So she's, you know, caught up with that. And that's... Yeah. yeah. And it, she's dealing with it all herself. She hasn't told a soul. So how did you write that? Did that sort of do your own head in? Um, I definitely felt her guilt. I definitely, you know, and just that, that stewing and all that. And um, this is the first young adult novel that I've written. Mm. I, all of my others have been tweens, between 8 and 12. So this is like 13 plus because there's some quite contentious issues in there. Yeah. Uh, the, the moral dilemma of this... I really enjoyed dipping into my inner 16 year old. Mm. I really enjoyed that passion. I was never brave uh, enough like these girls to go off to a party. Um, I don't think it even entered my head. I was far too scared. Uh, I never climbed out of a window. I think my mum would have killed me, so I was far <laughs> too scared to do that. Um, but just, yeah, I did really, really enjoy that. But. It doesn't matter whether it was when I was a 16-year-old, when my mother was a 16-year-old, whether my grandmother was 16-year-old or 16-year-olds today. Although there's outside issues, the inner angst is the same. Yeah. Right across the board, the guilt and the, the thrill of first love and uh, learning um, things as you're growing up and growing, growing older. And so I think that is the same right across the board. Mm. So I sort of just dipped into that really. And, and, and felt with that, it, you know, with no technology or anything involved, it was just that inner angst that I really wanted to show. Yeah. And, yeah, so her her feelings and her guilt, and she's all over the place. She is. There's it's loyalty with her friend, there's a guilt over the auntie, there's this excitement with this boy that she meets at this party, and uh, it's all of this stuff is all tumbling around in her the whole time, right through the whole novel. Mm. And she you, swings back and forth between all these different situations in her head. So she's trying to deal with all that. So, yeah, I really, yeah. really enjoyed that, which is different. In a, Brought it all back. Yeah, yes, it did, it did. Because I was no saint, but hopefully my mother isn't listening to this program. We'll uh, make sure she does. Yeah, 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 okay. But, yeah, there was no climbing out of windows or, or rush, you know, going to 
um, overage parties or anything yeah. like that. But yeah, it's mm. yeah. So Alex is the boy. Alex that, is the boy. That's another sort of tension in the book because that creates tension with Tam as well. Yes, it, it yeah. does. It does. Where something's happened and Tam thinks it was Alex and it wasn't Alex, and yeah. um, or was it? Yes. Or was it? Very tense, actually, yes. all the way through. Yeah, or mm. was it? So, uh, or I love, when I'm writing, I love to have lots of strings in there, lots of threads, uh, all combining together. And, and I love the fact that when you're writing and these strings connect on their own, I love that thrill mm. of when you're writing the first drafts. And so all these different strings, and they're all connected uh, with the secret that Kayla's holding with uh, whales. Let's get on to Wales very shortly. Yes, with the yeah. Wales, uh, through her family history, his family history, uh, which you know could have been connected, and um, right through to to the sort of explosive ending, really. Yeah. Mm. Mm. So Project Jonah, they are a recipient of the royalties from the first the launch sales and the first few sales. Yes. So tell us about your connection with Project Jonah. What's that got to do with the book? Um, the so. It all started, the whole book started with a song. This song is called Save the Whales. It was on the Nick Kershaw, Nick Kershaw Riddle album of 1984. And um, I, I knew, knew all the famous ones on there, but this particular song, I'm getting chills down my back as I speak. This particular song stops me in my tracks every time I hear it. It's so haunting, it's so sad. It's about wailing, mm. but one day I was at home by myself listening to the song and I thought, you know, why don't I write a story? I want to do something for the whales. I wanted, how, how, can I, how, how can I actually do something? And I thought, well, I can write. So I started to research about whales because every book that I do, I will immerse myself in that particular subject as much as possible. Mm. And everything I can read, I can uh, watch movies, uh, TV programs, anything I can get my hands on. So I started to immerse myself in the world of whales and discovered this amazing uh, organisation. It's a charitable, registered charity um, uh, volunteer organisation. Mm. And it's been going since 1974, which is like my whole lifetime and more. <laughs> and I never even knew that it existed. And what they do is they save whales from our beaches. And we have an extraordinary amount of beaches and, you know, for a small, such a small country. Yeah, mostly coastline, eh? Yes, mostly yeah. coastline. And it's very, very long, uh, you know, there, there is a lot of coastline to look after. And it, they save whales in a lot of the time in really remote places. And they've got, uh, they train volunteers around the country to call upon at any moment to go and help save whales and how to um, help them on the beach and to, keep them alive and as comfortable as possible before the tide comes in mm. while, the, while they're waiting for the tide. Um, and sometimes that's heartbreaking work because they can go out and then they can restrand and it's, it's just, they just do amazing, amazing work. And it's not just for whales, it's for all marine mammals. And they have this, this, um, this, this, what would you call it, this wish to give the marine mammals, you know, as much help as they can get. They deserve this. Yeah. And, I think anybody feels it quite uh, becomes quite emotional about seeing whales on a beach. Yeah. And they're struggling to breathe, and then they're in a completely foreign place, and they're and sometimes there's hundreds of them, mm -hmm. and it's just awful, awful to see on our TV screens. So I thought Project Jonah has to be part of this novel. So I spoke to Darren Grover. Uh, this has been going for quite a few years now and he's been absolutely fantastic. He's read several drafts, he's been so supportive, um, I've learned a lot, I've spoken to volunteers and what it feels like to go along to, to, to actually see stranded whales mm. and um, so I've spent, you know, spent a lot of time researching that and talking to them and I just and uh, you know really really want to help any way I can. Yeah. So like you say the Launch is a gold coin donation, which will be much appreciated. All my royalties from um, the launch and any sales in either of the Wardini Book stores in Napier and in Havelock North for the first week all go to Project Jonah. 
Brilliant. So, so you know, it's my way of mm. doing something. Yeah. So in, in the novel, Alex, mm. Mm. the boy, you know, our main boy protagonist, yes. he yes. is um, involved with Project Jonah. Yes. And of course, Kayla being... Falling in love, yes. you get involved with whatever the boys, boys are doing. doing. Yes, <laughs> yes, exactly. So that's their connection. So, yes. like you say, Project Jonah have double checked all your facts in here. So oh, that must yes. have been quite enlightening. Double, triple checked, yes, because mm. I want my books have to be authentic. You know, you have to be, and especially, especially something like that. You know, I want people to learn about Project Jonah and the work they do and maybe see if they can help as well. Mm. Um, Project Jonah is also, and the Wales is also a link with Kayla's past as well, which she doesn't know about. Yeah. But yeah, she finds out about that along the way, so that's all connected as well. So this guilty secret and these whales drive the whole plot, really. Yeah. Mm. And quite a lot of information in the back of the book about what you would like, what you can do if you yes. would like to yeah. investigate food. Well, you can, where you can look, really and look on, and you know, Project Jonah has an amazing website. Um, Department of Conversa Conservation as well, who they work with as well, mm. and Strandings um, as well. Lots and lots of information online. Mm. Mm. So this has been a novel in the pipeline for many years then? Many years. Yeah, because your first novel that was published was... Too Many Secrets. Too Many Secrets. Mm. And um, yeah, so tell us about your other, other novels. Um, Too Many Secrets was my first one published, but it was my third one written. Yeah. So I wrote two books before <laughs> that, which you know got uh, published after that. So Too Many Secrets is, is about a girl who makes a deal with her mum to uh, and a new, a new stepdad to do up a big old house in the country. When they've done it up, they'll flick it off and she can move back into town. But while she's out there, she's a city girl. She's you know she's queen of the mall. While she's out there, she <laughs> discovers that everyone not, knows who the queen of the mall is. <laughs> they're not they're not living they're not living in a in the house at all. They're living in a horrible little shack with no power, phone, internet coverage. You know, mm. of course she thinks she's gonna die. Yes. But she meets this boy in the bush, and so that uh, then there's just Jack, and that is about set in Napier and Hastings in 1930, 1931. Um, my grandfather, George Baines, helped me a lot with that because it's all about a young jockey trying to prove himself to his family. And in there, of course, there's another secret. What is it with you and secrets? Oh, I know. And I didn't even realise I was doing it until yeah. about the third or fourth book. All of my books have secrets in them. Mm. So, uh, for, you know, for the reader to discover, really. So there's that dis the secret. There's a sequel to Too Many Secrets where... Instead of Bex going out to the country and living in the bush, the boy she finds returns to the city with her, and it's, so it's about him getting used to that. And um, Secrets Again, it's got a ghostly feel. There's Between, which mm. came out a couple of years ago, which is my really covered my. Um, I delved into my fascination with the paranormal with yes. that one. Yeah. So and, and really enjoyed that. And there's. Again, a lovely little secret in there. Yes, we don't know what's going on because that's Ollie. Yes. And he's not allowed to talk to Mad Martha. Yeah. And his mum's vehemently against him talking to this village yeah. crazy person, mm. which is not a thing we say anymore, obviously. Yeah, no. But for poetic license Well, he there. discovers she's not crazy at all. Not at all, that's it. And yes. she's, yeah, all sorts of secrets all going on there. All sorts of stuff going in there. So, yeah, yeah, fascinating yeah. stuff. Yes, exactly, exactly. Yeah. And Trouble in Time as well, which also I... When, that was the first book I ever wrote, again with the help of my grandfather, um, set back in, 19, in the late 1920s uh, and now. So that was a time travel yep. book. He, oh, it's the conundrums of time travel are huge. Oh gosh, yes. I don't think I'll tackle it again. The butterfly effect. Yes, yeah. exactly. You have to get that right. So. And Trouble in Time was a shortlister in the, the book awards? Uh, Trouble in Time was shortlisted for the Leanzas. Yep. And uh, got, uh, was a storyline's notable book. Just Jack was um, a finalist in the New Zealand Book Awards. That's it. Children's yeah. Book Awards and a storyline's um, recipient uh, notable book. Yeah. Mm. It's amazing. We've got you living right here on our doorstep. Thank you. So how did you... You've always been a writer then? Yes. Like, I, as, as a I had, kid? As a kid, I was yeah. writing stories. And uh, I, I enjoyed writing stories. Some of my earliest memories are reading books 
um, sometimes underneath the blankets with a torch when I wasn't <laughs> supposed to be using up my dad's torch batteries, which I would get in trouble for. And um, always you know, reading and mum taking us to the library and that fascination of being able to choose books to take home. Mm. Love that. And while I got into, uh, as I was got older and became a teenager and I was reading and I was really into horror, I still love a good horror story. So I was writing horror stories. Then they were a lot more complex, loved that. And then when my children were young and my son, he was about four, three or four at the time, and he says, tell me a story. Oh, perfect. And um, he didn't want, want one off the shelf, so I just made up this little story about a little mouse called Cracker Jack Mouse. And then the next morning, <laughs> next night, he wanted Cracker Jack Mouse, and again and again. So from there, I did a writing course, and off I went. Yeah. Mm. And the rest is history, and as the they say. the rest is history, yeah, yeah. That was 2002 I began that, so... Yeah. Mm. Fabulous. Mm. And you're also a bookseller. You work for, oh, what's that book? What's that? I can't remember. Oh, Wardini Books. Oh, that's you? the one. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's, yes. the, that's so You're the school's expert there, the yes. children's book expert. Yeah. So how does being a bookseller, well, it, some of the links will be obvious to mm. being a writer, but how does it help? It helps because you understand both sides of the coin. Mm. You understand how much work goes into every single book, and not just with the, the author themselves, which it might take years for their book. Um, but all the people that come along afterwards, the editor and the proofreader yeah. and the, uh, the cover designer, the typesetter, there's so many people as part of that every single book that's on the shelves. Yeah. So that, and also from the bookseller's side, um, how, how that works as well and how we get books out there and explaining to, to authors that when they come in how it all works mm. and so that that sort of thing. Like authors work really hard, publishers work really hard, booksellers work doubly hard <laughs> and it is, you know, people are always saying, oh, what a lovely bookshop. Oh, I thought bookshops were dying. No. But no, Never. not at all. It's They're coming back. They mm. are coming back. So people always love books. There's so many book lovers mm. out there, yeah, of every age. Children's books are my passion, my particular passion. So, yeah, I just love story. I love a really good story. Yeah. And I think I get that from my dad. <laughs> and I found out when I was writing, and I didn't find this out until I started writing, that my grandmother was an author as well. Oh, okay. And she used to write for the newspapers, but she had to write under a non-diploma, of course, for them to take her pieces. Because she was a girl. Because she was a girl. Oh, so shocking. she was under the non-diploma of Jasper. So I didn't find that out until I... Yeah. first started writing and talking to talking to my papa about writing a story about this jockey and then he started telling me stuff and yeah it's it was, in the blood yeah it was in the blood mm. so mm. like you say there is a lot that goes into the production mm. of these books i mean you've worked now with scholastic and harper collins new harper zealand collins, and yeah. you're now with one tree house, one tree house um, mm. wendy pie because i've done a few things for uh schools yeah going to school schools. journals and school journals as well mm. um also yeah all sorts. Yeah. so it's been a big big learning curve it's a constant learning curve absolutely mm. yeah as create creativity of any sort is mm. Mm. so the launch the so launch. the launch is going to be march the 5th yes thursday march the 5th yes wardini books napier so tell us how that's going to run or what time what time it's at from 5 30. so just you know come along uh, at 5 30 we'll probably start the um the chatting and the that side of official side of things mm. at probably around six o'clock. Hopefully, uh, you will uh, find out more about Project Jonah. Yeah. Um, and I can tell you a little bit more about uh, what happened and where everything's come from, and maybe do a little bit of a reading. Mm. And yeah, but please do you know come along and support this amazing organisation that is doing this wonderful work for us that can't do it, can't get there. Or, you know, it's too, we don't, luckily, we're luckily, lucky in Napier that we don't have stranded whales. Mm. But, um, you know, a lot of places do and, and they get hundreds of people helping. And, and what this a worthwhile is the way that, thing to do. Yes, yeah. and they come away feeling quite, you know, quite wonderful. Sometimes it's sad, but the, the stories of volunteers sometimes are just wonderful and how they can help and uh, this is some way that we can help yeah without um, being on those beaches yes mm. yeah mm. so you've got your publisher Jenny Nagel's coming down yes. for the launch yes. and Project Jonah have given you some goodies to give away yes idea. project yes that's yeah. right so as you come in the door you will 
receive um, a little ticket and uh, we'll have some donation donation buckets at the door you'll receive a little ticket as you walk in the door and throughout the night we're going to have drawers all through the night and so there'll be some of my other books um, up for grabs and some little goodies from Project Jonah and uh, I think I think and I hope it's going to be a really fun night. It's going to be awesome. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So yeah, well, I think we'll be beating them away with a stick. Hopefully. hopefully. So yeah, get come, there about 5.30 come come everybody. Yes. March the 5th, yes. Thursday, 5.30. 5.30. We'll be ready. Yes. Yeah. That'll be good. Excellent. Well Adele, thank you so much for coming in and talking to us about If Only. If Only. If Only by Adele Broadbent out on March the 5th at Wardine Books Napier. Uh, you've been listening to Made in New Zealand on Radio Kidnappers, the voice of Hawke's Bay. Kia ora.